G'day guys, where's from Unsealed? So, <laughs> you may notice I've got an air compressor that's not going to stay there. Um, I've got brand spanking new, double pumper from the guys over at ARB. The purpose of this video is to explain to you guys why you absolutely need to start your four-wheel drive if you're going to run your compressor. The problem is, is as batteries, if your batteries, for example, turned off, you turn your compressor on, your voltage is going to start to come down. Now, as most of you will probably know if you've been following on in our 12 volt merry way of fun, is that as the voltage comes down, the amps go up. So if we're pairing that with, say, the car's running, we've got 13.8, 14 volts, 14.4 in some older cars. I like does 13.8. Um, if, you pump, if, you, if you're pumping 13.8 volts into the compressor, it's having a great day, it's drawing bugger all amps, right? If you turn the car off, and yet leave the compressor going. Some guys wire them up so you can run them with the ignition off. Don't do that. The little red wire here that I've jury rigged, run that to an ignition source so it'll only run when your ignition is on, i.e. your car's running. But when you run it with your volts down, so your car not running, it saps the volts really, really quickly, the amps go through the roof. Now, where that's a problem is that what will happen is because it's a tw twin pumper, even the singles have exactly the same problem, Two electric motors, right? Or one, if you've got a single. What happens is the electric motors, because they're, they've they got less voltage, they're drawing a lot more amps. And as, where that becomes a problem is as your amps come up, it increases heat throughout everything. So your motor is gonna start getting very hot very quickly because it's drawing a lot more amps. So the other hassle is that despite flattening your start battery, if you have got it on you know, your auxiliary battery or a battery in your canopy or in the back, whatever the case may be, It'll still do the same thing regardless, okay? It'll drop your amps. So start the car, you've got a DC DC charger or even just an isolator will still pump up that rear battery or your auxiliary battery enough to keep the amps down on the motors. Um, where that is an issue is when you get heat in electric motors, they start to have problems insofar as they will absolutely burn themselves out. So the problem there is no matter whether you've got an ARB, a cheap eBay jobby, whatever, whatever compressor you've got, if you do happen to do that, you burn the motor out, you take it back, they pull it apart, work out, you burn the motor out because you haven't been running it when the car's running, um, then they're gonna say sorry, but there's no warranty, all right? So, end of the day, if you're gonna run your compressor, right, you absolutely must have your car running, all right? Keep the volts really nice and high from your alternator, everyone's happy, your compressor or your winch, or whatever the electric motor you're running will last a lot longer, all right? Um, but just to give you guys an indication, what I'll do now is I will start this. Like I said, I've got it absolutely jury rigged. It's got power. Um, I'm taking the ignition source straight off the battery. So if at the moment I'm sitting on, let's have a look. I'm sitting on no volts apparently. That's very awkward. There you go. Twack out. I'm sitting on 12.6. So if I jam that in there and I kick this little switch, so I'm at 12.6 resting. Now I've come out last night, drove it yesterday afternoon. Uh, I haven't driven it overnight, I haven't driven it this morning. So it's sitting at 12.6, which means my battery's not having a great time. So it's probably time for a new one. Anyway, more importantly, as soon as I hit this up, that's it, 11.9, 11.85. Okay, so, and the battery's just recovered itself back up to 12.45, 12.46, 12.5. Okay, so the battery comes back up. When it's drawing power, the voltage goes right down, which increases your amps a metric crap ton, all right? Um, make sure you have the car running, all right? What I'll do now is I'll go and start the car, do exactly the same test, and after about 10 seconds of the compressor running, despite the fact that it'll run a lot better, a lot quicker, um, what we'll do is we'll then test exactly how many volts we've got when the car's running and see how much voltage drop we've got. Back in a sec. All right, guys, so we're now with the car running. We're now up to 13.9 volts, all right? So if I flick this switch, hey, it runs a lot better. And we've only dropped to 13.5, 13.6 volts. So, not by nearly as much air draw. Right, chance.
chances are I'm going to leave that little bit of me turning the car off in the video. You'll hear the speed of the motor and how it sounds dropping. All right, it is what it is. It's one of those things. So, end of the day, guys, if you're going to run a compressor, even if you've just got to put a little bit of air in one of your tyres, start the car, all right? Um, I know as we're letting tyres down and pump back up again, that's what we do is we have a chin wag, all right? Considering the sound of a compressor, the noise of a compressor over an engine is about the same, all right? It's not going to make that much difference, so run your bloody engine. It'll save this in the long run and save you this in the long run. Well, there you go, guys. That will hopefully explain to you how and why you need to be running your engine when you've got the compressor going. Um, next on the list for me, I'm going to go and install that uh, in the canopy of the Hilux. I'll do a video on the install and how I'm going to mount it, how I'm going to run it, how I'm going to wire it, because that's an interesting part because I haven't got an accessory wire or ignition source at the back of the car. Um, and I'm also going to run some outlets for our hoses, one to the bull bar and one to the back of the tray. So it makes life easier and I'll be able to pump up the dirty old camper uh, when I'm out on the road. So stick around, that'll be next. Um, but look, at the end of the day, if you struggle a little bit with what I've said and how I've explained it, I'm gonna, there'll be an article on unsealed4x4.com.au that will go into great detail. I'll even pull out maths if I have to, I'll, I'll probably have to. I'll do the maths. Um, <laughs> and run through exactly what happens and look at if you're at this many volts and you're in this many amps or this many watts, you know, what happens or what, what the standard is and how it goes up and down depending on what your volts are doing. Obviously, when you're charging your battery, your volts are going up and down. Um, when the car's off, your volts are down. So I'll explain that a little better. Anyway, guys, check out the uh, check out the article unsealed and I'm gonna go and start installing this in the back of the canopy. Catch you next time.